Good morning. It says we are live on this beautiful Friday morning. Um, we're waiting a little bit for Angel to get here. She had to take her, she drops her daughter off at uh, school about 10 minutes till. And she said she would get here just as fast as she could. So welcome to another uh, episode on Friday Free For All of Free Daily Coaching where we are here Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. Pacific. Uh, Mr. Burt Bledsoe does Monday through Thursday with different topics and he gets very passionate sometimes. On Fridays, I get the honor of hosting and I've been interviewing people, which has been very enlightening and I've enjoyed it very much. Um, what an amazing group of people we are in this community. And this week I'm going to interview Angel Balachowski when she gets here, um, which I hope is soon. But thank you for joining us this morning on this episode. And if you have any questions for Angel, and I believe she is here now. Good morning. Hi. How are you? I'm doing awesome. Thank you. How are you? I am good. You made good time. <laughs> well, I had to get one to school and one to uh, upstairs and comfortable, right? So <laughs> the joy of having children. Exactly, exactly. So let me introduce you here. You? I'm sure most people know you already. You know, Angel, I was thinking about this this morning. You, since I came online, I think you and I's lives have crossed so many times. I feel yeah. like, I feel like I, I feel like you're my best friend that I've known you forever. I and know, right? It's so awesome. <laughs> I know. And, and we're going to get to finally meet. <laughs> I know, in September. Yay. I'm so excited. Are you going in August as well? I don't know anything about the August one. Like live the dream. Oh, live the dream. I don't know. Um, I'm going up to Bert's ranch in May, the end of May. Oh, and that's exciting. Spending a few days up there with he and Jessica. So I'm really looking forward to that. Awesome. Um, in fact, I is is that where we first met with Sue Bird? Yeah, yeah, it would be for sure because that's where I started out here too. It was over on over here. Yeah. That would have been. It would be two years ago this coming August that I met Bert. And uh, it's only been about a year and a half for me, but. Uh, yes, yeah, so exactly the same timing, eh? Crazy. So you, what brought you online to begin with? Wanting to be home with my kids. That was it. I wanted to be home with my kids, and so I tried a bunch of different things, and uh, really I was introduced to network marketing and knew that in order to build my network marketing team because my warm market was so not open to network marketing that I had to seek online. So I started taking courses and seeking out and I came across MLSP just by um, finding it online. Like nobody introduced me to it. I just found Brian's video online and that's when I was like, hey, there's an option to do this online. So let's go with it and see. And so there, there you go, guys. Again, video works. For sure. It does. It does. Absolutely. Video is one of my favorite marketing platforms for sure. Well, it took me a while and Lynn Mooney to kick my butt. <laughs> <laughs> so it wasn't always easy for you though, was it? You had some no. struggles in the beginning. Oh yeah. I had no clue. No clue what I was doing in the beginning. And I was like self-taught because I didn't really have anybody guiding me. I was I was um, teaching myself and I struggled probably 
Only for the first six months, I just like studied the training. I didn't even really apply too much. I was just learning it. And um, then things came together. When I met Bert and started to really listen to him and listen to his guidance and just be like, okay, he's done what I want to do. How did he do it? And just do the things that he told me to do, that's when everything changed. And getting around this group here and having that community and coming out of my shell where I kind of always was a wallflower, like I was always observing when we would do the 100 day challenge or anything, I was like in the background and always watching all these people step up and do stuff. And so coming around you guys really helped me to come out of that because he would bring us out on Fridays, right? And all of a sudden it's like, oh my goodness, I'm on a hangout. You know, I have to talk to people. And so that really helped me to just get comfortable with it. And then learning from him helped me to finally make some money online. <laughs> I hear you there. And then you and Lynn were going to do a project together and something happened to stop that. You want to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I, um, we just like had a horrible catastrophe in our house. It was, my husband got hurt at home and um, because he was home, they had sent him home early from work. He got in a horrible accident that put him out of work for, I don't know, eight, nine months. And um, be, he didn't have any benefits at his work. Like here in Canada, you, you either have a job that has benefits or you don't. And he unfortunately had a job that didn't. And um, because he was home, we didn't get what's called workers' compensation here. So we went and I had just been laid off from my law firm job because I was still working in the evening so Chris would come home and then I would go to work at five and I would come home at about three or four in the morning so that was our schedule and then all of a sudden I got laid off two weeks later he had the accident so we went from basically a two income household to like a third of an income if that and so it was really hard we went through a lot of um, a lot of horrible things and I think at that point I was just too stressed. I didn't like I didn't even know who I was at that point. I was just, you know, when you go into survival mode and you're just like functioning through your days. I've got two kids to take care of. I've got businesses that I was running and it was just like, okay, I've got to make money. Like that's the only way I was functioning. It was like I've got to get through my day and I've got to make money. And that was like my life for about 6 months was just surviving. Wow. That must have been just horrible. Yeah, it was. I mean, we're still coming out of it. You know, when you go through that, if you don't have a safety net, then you fall. <laughs> like, you know, and that's just what happened to us. We had already really been stretching ourselves by me working so part time. Like, even though I was working in the evenings, I was only working three or four days. Um, so my main goal was just to be with my kids. So we had already said, well, we'll go into debt for these few years while you're home with the kids and work out of it but because we were already in debt because I was home with the kids we had nothing like we had zero so having something safe and having what we have as an opportunity to fall into and, and to really build up is huge so I would never recommend always just kind of just making it there has to be something else that you can rely on well what I've noticed about you lately okay pup <laughs> <laughs> You talk about kids. This one's a yeah. brat. Doggies uh, are kids too. Oh yeah, she's got her little perch up here. I, you, you really can't yeah. see her, but she's right Aww. in my drawer with pillows. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cute. Um, all of a sudden, it seemed like you exploded. Um, I, I know I didn't feel like that to you at the time. But you all of a sudden rank advanced in MLSP. Yeah. You started working with um, Doug Firebaugh. And if you guys don't know who Doug is, you really, really need to find him. He does a, a, a daily rodeo, uh, rodeo radio show called The Milk <laughs> And he's kind of like a rodeo. <laughs> hey, bring me to you rodeo baby uh, <laughs> he is texan so <laughs> there you go. wouldn't you say that dr doug is today's jim Rohn? oh yeah just so humble though like i mean he would never even say that he is so for sure um he's going to be doing things in the home business industry he already has but i mean the things that are coming the changes that he's going to be making and the icon that he already is and is even going to become more 
absolutely. He's going to be so, I mean, his words are wisdom. You could write down everything that comes out of that man's mouth. It's amazing. And I do, and I put it out on the line. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> How did you meet Dr. Deb? So it's so funny. I, Bert was on the radio show with him one day, and this was back like, um, this would have been right before Chris's accident. So this was like October, 2014. And he, Bert was on there and I just happened to post on my Facebook, Hey, Bert's on the millionaire road with Doug Firebaugh. And Doug had just done a, uh, a training for us in MLSP in August of that year. So I had just started like learning who he was and how brilliant he was. So I posted that and Doug was like, Hey, come on. We're going to have to have you on to the show sometime. And I was like, Oh yeah, that would be great. And you know, just kind of like, ha ha. But then it really happened. And then it happened over and over again. And I kind of hung back in the shadows while that was going on. And I think that coming and being a guest on his radio show helped me through that year. Really just to, uh, Doug's done something in my life that nobody else has. And he has somehow believed in me and seen something in me from the second that we met online and we haven't even met personally yet but he said to me I see something in you I know there's you know there's something in you that has to come out and he is absolutely responsible for that coming out of me because I think if you grow up and it's not that I didn't have people believing in me but I just had you know, our, our mentality was a little bit different right and, and so this whole world is new so to have somebody to see your greatness and who you can be and encourage that out of you like I mean that does wonders for a person it completely changed me so I you know I owe him so much I am so thankful for him in my life and myself also he has deemed you the angelic one <laughs> when, I'm <not laughs> when I'm listening to the show and he'll say I hear angel wings coming yeah. <laughs> so funny <laughs> so he does call you out quite often and uh, and you do a fantastic job. Thank you. Thank you so much. I love being on there. I, uh, it's just so much fun. It, it went from being, I was so nervous in the beginning where I would just like sweat and get like stomach cramps. It, you would think that I did like a workout after I was on the show in the beginning. And now it's just like a hop on the phone and just do it. But it took a long time to get comfortable <laughs> with that, you know, that type of, I don't know. When you do videos, you don't know who's watching, but on the radio, you know people are listening and they're listening critically, right? So it was tough to get used to. Well, he well, he's awesome. And and you, if you guys don't listen to his show, I usually post it on my wall uh, when he posts who his guest is going to be that day, and um, you just click on the Bitly link that's in there, and then you hit live player and the millionaire road will come up and you just click on him. He comes on at nine Oh six, my time, which is specific time, but he is just awesome to listen to you guys. So if you don't know who Dr. Doug is, you should, and this is your interview and there I am praising Dr. Doug. Go for it. <laughs> he is amazing. <laughs> he is. He is amazing. Um, so I guess we should get around to marketing here. Um, what marketing platforms have been working for you? What social media have you been using? I've been doing a lot of Facebook ads lately. I uh, kind of fine-tuned and took some extra courses there. So I've been doing that. It's been working really well. Um, I also do video. I haven't been as active on video. And I also have blogs, but still same thing, haven't been as active because I'm focused a little bit more on just straight out recruiting right now but those are the platforms that I love I love Twitter um, I think the marketing strategy if anybody is in MLSP here and uh, wants to go in the back office and check out April and Matt strategy for Twitter it works amazing like over Christmas I paid for our entire Christmas just with their strategy and uh, I love everything I mean I'm home all the time so I'm using basically everything even LinkedIn but I I'm, I love video like my passion is video and that is what I love to do I love to put videos up and and uh, I think the leads you get just continually from that are amazing and if you do it the right way they're gonna come in all the time okay LinkedIn's sort of hard to crack I use LinkedIn for messaging like seeking out the right people 
and just shoot the messages. Just be, I find LinkedIn, you need to be straightforward. People don't have time to mess around with relationship building or anything like that. So I'm just very straightforward on LinkedIn. I've been building my profile over there a little bit. Um, but like I say, it's, it's hard to crack. They're, they're more very professional people over there. Yeah, they are. So you're looking for the entrepreneurs and, you know, just asking them questions about what they're open to is what I find works over there. Um, so you're doing Facebook ads. You love Twitter. You know, Mark uh, Lalone also has a really good um, course on Twitter in the back. Does he? I haven't watched his yet. I actually, I, I watched both half of April and Matt's and just took off with it. <laughs> so I haven't even finished theirs, but it just started working so good. I never went back and watched anything else. Have you tried Instagram at all? I am not. No, I'm on Instagram. I have never had any results with Instagram. I don't know why. I like, in the beginning, I tried the few things. I am not a huge picture taker. Like, that's just not my nature. So I tended to pull away from it because I do believe in doing what you enjoy. And for me, Instagram was a chore. And so it was like, I'm not even going to force myself to learn a marketing platform that I already don't want to do because if I'm putting that type of energy into it, I'm not going to get results from it. Right. So I use it for personal photos and hanging out with friends and I'm, I'm building slowly there so that when I have more time, I will probably focus on it more. But right now it's not a big focus for me. Do you have any favorite uh, books that you read? Um, yeah, right now I'm listening to Psycho Cybernetics. Uh, I don't even know who the author is of that. I could look on my phone. But there's that. Um, I just finished Outwitting the Devil, which, oh, oh like. That had a that, big impact on me. Me too. It's just um, probably that book for me eliminated my fear because I was able to recognize the only place where my fear was residing, and that book eliminated it. And I think probably – my transformation in these last couple of months, along with Doug's coaching, that book and him, like just snapped something different in me. It, re I, it made me realize we literally don't have to fear anything. That fear is just up here and it's to trick us. And so the fact that now that I recognize fear as being, being part of the negative that's trying to hold me back, I can like every time I feel fear now, I just shut it down. Like I just cancel it and I and I think of where I'm going. So yeah, that sorry, I kind of went off there. That book, um, what else have I read recently? Well, Think and Grow Rich was a huge impact. I read that once a year. And as a man thinketh, I read that every single day. I read one one day portion every single day. Um, Compound Effect was awesome. Uh, Dot com Secrets was awesome. Just tons of different books. I've got a list. Of every time somebody recommends a book, I just put it on my list. So I've got, I think, about 25 books on my list this year to read. But I love books. Yep, I have that too. A big <laughs> list. I just got As a Man Think of. I know I read it years ago, but I, I just got it. It's at my bed stand, and uh, I plan on delving into it. Now, I haven't read the book Outwitting the Devil, but it is online six hours worth. Oh, really? Um, it's on YouTube and uh, listening to just listening to it, not even reading it, just really had a profound effect on on uh, my outlook on things. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's a it's a life changer. It really is. I keep asking them if they've got any questions for you, but nobody seems to <laughs> want to ask anything. I guess. <laughs> we just been too thorough, huh? <laughs> it's Friday. Everybody is in Friday mode. <laughs> I know what else I was going to talk to you about. Um, your kids. Your kids now, they're going to be not the next generation because that would be Diane Hockman's kids or the next generation of entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. But your kids are going to be the generation after that if you really think about it. I know. And how are you bringing them into your business? They are a part of it every single day. I don't try to hide them. 
uh, unless if it's something very professional that I know they can't be a part of. Like if I'm hosting a webinar um, that's really important, then I don't have them in the background. If it's my own personal webinars, they're allowed to be around. I've always allowed them to hear everything that I'm doing. And when I listen to my books on audio or I'm listening to my trainings, I'm doing that in the kitchen where they can hear it. And they're thinking, like my daughter's thinking has already changed because she will call me out when I'm when I'm speaking or, or thinking a way that I shouldn't be. She'll call me out on it now, and I love that. And I'm raising them. Um, I mean, even after reading out Witting the Devil, it's changed my mind a little bit on the education system. So I am starting this summer when they're out of school, we're going to be doing a daily entrepreneur training where I'm going to just talk to them about the possibilities in life and, you know, share with them what I'm doing or share with them ways that they can start, you know, maybe thinking of things that they can do for themselves just in the home. Even my daughter and I put together all of her clothes uh, yesterday that she wasn't using to give away. I mean, it's a way of just thinking of others before yourself and she's you know talking about running her lemonade stand again this summer and what she wants to do with her money and so just encouraging them I let them be who they want to be I don't really stifle them and uh, I'm a little bit of a free spirit so I probably some people would come into my home and say you need to be more disciplined but I, it's not lack of discipline it's just that I'm allowing them to be because I think going to school everybody's lumped into this one group and everybody's expected to be the same and you're supposed to get good grades in every course and that's just not who they are and so I'm not gonna you know yell at them I want them to strive to be the best in everything that they do but if they're not the best in the class I'm not going to make them feel bad about that and I believe that we're made for a lot more than just going to school and getting good grades and graduating so I'm just encouraging them to really bring out their spirit, to really tap into God and to figure out what their gifts are and to um, just talk, just to openly talk about anything that they feel is on their mind. So uh, wow. not really like hippie-like, hippie, hippie -like, but more free. It's free around here. Um, your, well, your daughter is not afraid of the, the camera, that's for sure. She's going to be really good. <laughs> uh, Craig wants to know yeah. how, how old the kids are. My daughter is nine and my son is three and a half. Wow, they are so lucky to have you for their mom. <laughs> Thank you. No, I, I love them. They are my life. Like, they are my happiness. And Whitman wants to know if um, your husband is part of the business at all, and if so, how? He's not. He's never. Um, he's been very supportive in the fact that he has watched me fail a lot. So he's a part of the business in the way that he has never held me back from anything that I ever wanted to do. And even this last venture that I started, it was like he could have easily said, you know, that's that's enough of changing what you're doing. And he didn't. So um, he supports me by you know, when I'm hosting the webinars on at nine o'clock for the, for the team, he's with the kids. Or, you know, if I have to hop on to, if I have to call a bunch of leads in the evening, he's making supper and he's with the kids. So he's not actively building the business with me, but he's supporting me so that I can. That's awesome. Uh, Dale wants to know what your daily method of operation looks like. What my, what my deal. Yeah. I schedule my day every night before I go to sleep. If I don't, then I find that you kind of spend too much time figuring out what you're going to do. So I always make sure I know exactly what my must-dos are every single day, my non-negotiables. And then there might be a few things that are on there that if I get to them, like a blog post, <laughs> then yeah. great. If I don't, I'm not going to beat myself up about it. But my daily operation, because I'm actively building network marketing right now, um, my daily operation is my phone calls that I need to make, um, setting my appointments and active recruiting, um, getting with my team and knowing what they need and making sure that I'm with them and helping them with whatever they need. And then after that, it's anything else that falls after that. But my, my leads, my phone calls, my appointments, and my team are my number one for every single day. And then if I can do a video or if I can do a blog post or if I can actively recruit for another hour or whatever, um, then I do that as well. But those are kind of my, if I get to them, great. If not, I stopped beating myself up because I found that I was at a stress level, like up here trying to do it all. And although I love blogging and I have two blogs that I should be blogging on, I'm not beating myself up right now because 
I can't handle that stress. It just, it makes me, you know, you could be up all night really working and that's kind of what I was doing. And I realized I've got to allow myself to sleep, you know, stress kind of wreaked havoc on me and my autoimmune system kind of got out of whack in the last year. So I'm really focusing on less stress, knowing exactly what I need to do to do. I've, I've put my focus on building my team. And so the rest of the stuff, it doesn't fall along the wayside, but it's just not my focus. And so I know that as long as I do what I'm focused on, then I'm going somewhere, you know, mentally I needed that. <laughs> you, see, you see what I have in my hand? Hey, is that your greens or your reds? That's my greens. And I'll awesome. tell you what, these, these greens help me focus every morning. They give me my, my energy. Well, they do more for me, as you know, but they're really, they can help you focus mm -hmm. and they take a lot of stress out of your life. They do. When I'm tired, if I need a boost of energy, I take my greens and it's like, whew, okay, where am I going now? <laughs> pour the reds right into my mouth. <laughs> yeah, they're delicious. They're like a dessert. <laughs> uh, Margaret said, Maybe she missed something, but how do you actively recruit? Well, I try to not make it complicated for people because I actively recruit on every platform, but I schedule a day for each. So say Monday is my Facebook day, Tuesday is my Twitter day, Wednesday is LinkedIn, um, Thursday is, um, what else do I do? Oh, I, I actually, I use I use classifieds. I think classifieds are awesome for recruiting. And um, and then I talk out, you know, as I'm going out and about, I'm also talking to people. My main way of recruiting recently has been from Facebook ads. I wrote a story ad, and I suggest that anybody does this that has a Facebook page, write a story about where you're at and where you're going and target the people that you're looking for. And people respond to that. People want to know that you're real. And I think somebody trained on this in MLSP just recently too, a, a story ad. So you might want to go in the training and, and they might, they probably have way better training than what I'm saying here, but just saying where I've been, my struggles, um, then what's happened, what has me excited and where I'm going and who I'm looking for. And probably for the last month, that's where I've been getting most of my leads from. I spent quite a bit on the ad, but I recouped all my cost through my recruiting and signing people up. So for me, that's worth it. So you have to be sometimes willing to take a risk in order to gain that result, you know, and it's kind of pushing yourself. If you want to do everything free, then I would really suggest Twitter as a great way to actively recruit because if you, you can find your specific people that you want to target, you follow them, you keep a list of all the people that you follow. And I wouldn't use an auto DM if you're going to be actively recruiting on, on Twitter, but you target the people and then when they follow you back, you start that conversation and have a direct conversation and be like, I followed you for this reason. I'm wondering if you're open to whatever, or if you're looking for people who might need MLSP, then you're following people in network marketing and you're doing the same thing. I followed you because I saw you're doing this. I'm just wondering, are you open to taking a look at a system that might help you get more leads and sales on autopilot, you know, and just being direct instead of always, you know, beating around the bush and encouraging people. And that was just recent coaching that I had that that helped me through that because I was a relationship builder. I was like, oh, I'm so happy you're in network marketing. Good for you. I encourage. Like I was just, you know, I was a, the encourager and that's just kind of who I am. But to get results, you got to start being more direct and you got to start to claim your own. And you've got to realize that nobody's going to build your business but you. And so spending your time talking to people and building them up the chances of them coming back around to you to say, oh, you know, I'm struggling. Who is that person that I talked to three months ago that told me that I was doing awesome because I, you know, joined home business? Ask people for what you want. If you don't ask people for what you want, other people will. And the people who ask for what they want get what they want. And the people who don't end up working for the people who ask for what they want. So it's just realizing that coming out of your comfort zone and asking those direct questions wherever you are on whatever platform um, will get you those results. So. It's just, yeah, that's changed it for me. But I would say Twitter for sure. If you're, if you want to do a free method, just follow that Twitter training on how to find your exact people and start talking to them and talk to, you know, make a, make a goal to talk to 20 people on Twitter per day and it will put your business in massive momentum.
You know what? You can do a whole training on just what you ranted about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, well, it's, it's true. And it's just, you know, and I think for attraction marketing, relationship building is great. But if you're recruiting, you got to be direct. It's that's just the way it is or else somebody else is going to come along and ask them the question and you're going to see them signed up and that just happens to me too. I wasn't direct with somebody and I saw somebody sign up, which is great. I mean, I'm happy, you know, they're, they're in regardless, but it happens. People will come in and, and, and ask the questions that you're too scared to ask. So well, two people that I introduced, they signed up elsewhere. There you go. See, exactly. Yeah. Because so I didn't push it. I didn't push it. And I had that in another company too. I had someone sign up and I was actually a little upset. And I asked the person who they signed up with and I said, you know, didn't, did they mention it all? And, and she said, yeah, they did mention, but they said that you didn't ask. I had said everything <laughs> else, but will you take a look? And I was like, you're right. I didn't ask. I did not say, will you take a look? I was just like, so this is what I'm doing. You know, this is why it's so great, blah, blah, blah. But I didn't, I never asked the question. So you'll miss out if you don't ask. Oh, and you mentioned classified ads. What what kind of classified ads? Uh, jobs, but I, I word them. I don't like to trick people. So if you're in network marketing, you can run a classified ad and not have it flagged. A lot of them will be flagged. It's just going back in and redoing it again. I mean, it's no big deal. But on Craigslist, I post ads and uh, get the response. And I mean, we have a little bit of a different system for our company, which is great. But um, if you don't have any way for them to contact you, email is fine. And uh, just having a conversation, being, again, direct up front what you're doing and, you know, if they're open to it. And I actually I recruited two people last week off of Craigslist. And, you know, you can find some really quality people. Craigslist, even from before, for the last couple of years, I've been using it for things that I've been doing. And um, there's some quality people out there looking. And when they see something that catches their eye, they will respond. And then there's some that aren't. But, I mean, it's easy to, to differentiate between the two. That's very true. Well, I know that you've got another call that you've got to get to. I do. I will be right behind you. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, thank you so much for having me on and being able to share and just spend some time with you guys in the morning. I can't see the chat, but I thank everybody who's here, and I'm just super honored to be here. Well, we had a lot of people show up, and just – this community is fantastic. I mean, it's an extension of MLSP's community, which is absolutely fantastic. And now we've got another family extension. So right. we're just surrounded by love, aren't we? Absolutely. And I've got to say, too, I mean, Bert, Bert believed in me before I believed in myself. And so he would always encourage me. And, he, and, I, and you know, if you're working with Bert or anything and, and you hear him say, you know, you're going to have people – noticing that you're doing something and rallying around you but you're not you're not feeling like you're doing anything and all of a sudden that's going to tip it's so true and he he is just such an encourager and such an amazing person that I cannot wait to meet that man in August <laughs> I'm just gonna blow him right down with my hug oh <laughs> uh, well I get I already got to hug him twice and uh, I'll get to hug him even more in May so uh, oh that's awesome that is so cool that you get to go hang with them did you hear what he did for me at Christmas? No. What did he do? He drove, I don't know, probably 150 miles out of his way to take me to Christmas dinner because he knew I was all alone. Oh, that is so nice, really. That's so awesome. And I had no Christmas presents, and he he brought me um, a Packers mug. He said it killed him, just killed him to buy that mug. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. But I was touched beyond belief. Um, so. Oh, that's so awesome. He's Mar such a good person. Margo wants to know what your last name is. Is Balachowski? Balachowski, yes. And if anyone, if anyone, um, sorry guys, if anyone wants to find you, Angel, where where should they look for you? Facebook is the best. I'm the only Angel Balachowski out there. So connect with me over there if we're not connected already. And Whitman, I will put Dr. Doug's information up on my um, 
my wall or I'll put it, I'll send you a personal message so you can hear how to listen to his webinar or his call every day. It's, uh, it's fantastic. It really is. Anyway, Angel, thank you so much for being here. Um, oh, everyone, thank you. Everyone, thank you for attending this morning. Angel's one of my favorite thank people. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Uh, I absolutely adore you, Chris. I cannot wait to meet you. And it's just going to be so exciting. And I absolutely love you. I love what you're doing for everybody. I love your consistency and enthusiasm. And I just can't wait to see what else is coming for you this year. It's going to be incredible. It's going to be a big year, Angel. It is. It is. <laughs> All right, guys. I'm shutting it down. Love you guys. And um, thanks for being here. Have a Love you guys. Thanks. Have a fantastic weekend and be blessed.